welcome dear students today we shall continue with the lesson force and pressure so today the very first topic for us is atmospheric pressure air surrounds the earth from all sides this layer of air is called atmosphere the atmosphere exists to about 16 km height it further extends up to 400 km in a very dilute form the pressure created due to air is called atmospheric pressure imagine that a very long hollow cylinder of unit cross sectional area is standing on the surface of the earth and it contains air weight of this air is the force applied in the direction of the center of the earth this means that the atmospheric pressure is the ratio of this weight divided by the area of the surface the air pressure at the sea level is called one atmosphere pressure air pressure decreases as one goes up in height from the sea level one atmosphere is equal to 101 into 10 raised to 3 pascal is equal to 1 bar is equal to 10 raised to 3 millibar 1 millibar is equivalent to 10 raised to 2 pa atmospheric pressure is specified in the units millibar or hectopascal the atmospheric pressure at a point in air is equal from all sides how is this pressure created it if air exist in a closed container the air molecules in random motion continuously hits the wall of the container in this interaction a force is exerted on the walls of the container pressure is created due to this force we con con constantly bear the atmospheric pressure on our heads however the cavities in our body are also filled with air arteries and veins are filled with blood therefore we do not get crushed under water and due to atmospheric pressure as the pressure is balanced the earth's atmospheric pressure decreases with height from the sea level as shown in the figure use your brain power at the sea level the atmospheric pressure 101 into 10 raised to 3 pascal is acting on a table top of size 1 meter square under such a heavy pressure why doesn't the table top crumble down think students atmospheric pressure is not a force it is a pressure meaning it acts like a force distributed over an area and acts normal to the surface of our bodies though the atmospheric pressure at the sea level is acting on a table top of size 1 meter square the table top doesn't crumble down as the top has an internal equalizing pressure which prevents it from collapsing the next topic for us is buoyant force let's do one activity students take a plastic bottle and fix the lid tightly now place it in water and see it will float on water try and push it into the water even when pushed it continues to float this experiment can also be done with a plastic hollow ball now fill the bottle with water to the fullest capacity and close the lid and release in water the bottle will float inside the water why does this happen the empty plastic bottle floats on the surface of water on the contrary the bottle full of water floats inside water but does not go to the bottom the weight of the empty bottle is negligible as compared with the weight of the water inside such a bottle with water neither floats on the surface nor does it go to the bottom this means 
the force due to gravity acting downward must have been balanced by an opposing force in the upward direction on the bottle filled with water. This force must have originated from the water surrounding the bottle. The upward force acting on the object in water or other fluid or gas is called buoyant force. Once again, I'll repeat the upward force acting on the object in water or other fluids or gas is called buoyant force. Here is a picture for you all to refer. The arrows pointing downwards is the force of gravity, whereas the arrows pointing upward is the buoyant force. While pulling a bucket from a well, the bucket full of water immersed fully in water appears to weigh less than when it has been pulled out of water. Why students? This happens because when the bucket is in water, it experiences an upthrust in the vertically upward direction. Therefore, we can easily pull it when it is in water. But once it is out, there is no upthrust and now there is only one force which is pulling it up, that is muscular force. Try this. Take a piece of thin aluminium sheet and dip it in water in a bucket. What do you observe? Now shape the same piece of aluminium into a small boat and place it on the surface of water. It floats, isn't it? Why does this happen students? In the first case, the volume of water displaced is equal to the volume of the aluminium sheet. Since the density of aluminium is more than that of water, the thin sheet is not able to displace enough weight of the liquid to stay afloat. In the second case, the boat displaces a volume more than the volume of the metal plate. In this case, it is possible that the weight of the extra volume of water displaced can be equal to the weight of the metal and hence the boat floats. An iron nail sinks in water. But why does the massive steel ship float on it? When an object is dipped in a liquid, a buoyant force acts on it and hence it appears that the weight of the object is reduced. It becomes easier to swim in seawater than in fresh water. This is because the density of seawater is higher than the density of fresh water due to salts dissolved in seawater. Buoyant force depends on two factors. Number one, volume of the object. The buoyant force is more if the volume of the dipping object is more. Number two, density of liquid. More the density of liquid, more is the force of buoyancy. The third topic for us is Archimedes principle. Take a long rubber band and cut it at one point. At one of its end, tie a clean washed stone or a 50 gram weight as shown in the figure. Now hold the other end of the rubber band and make a mark there. Keep the stone hanging in air and measure the length of the rubber band from the stone to the mark made earlier. Now take water in a pot and hold the rubber band at such a height that when stone sinks in it, again me measure the length of the rubber band up to the mark. What is observed? This length is shorter than the earlier length. While dipping the stone in water, length of the stretched rubber gets slowly reduced and is minimum when it sinks completely. What could be the reason for a shorter length of the rubber band in water? When the stone is sunk in water, a buoyant force acts on it in the upward direction. The weight of the stone acts downward. Therefore, the force which acts on it in the downward direction is effectively reduced.
how much is the magnitude of the buoyant force is it the same for all the liquids the answer to these questions are embodied in archimedes principle this principle states that when an object is partially or fully immersed in a fluid a force of buoyancy acts on it in the upward direction this force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object introduction to the scientist archimedes was a greek greek scientist and a mathematician with sharp intelligence he found out the value of pi by numerical calculations his knowledge of levers pulleys wheels in physics was useful to the greek army in fight against the roman army he became famous due to his work in geometry and mechanics when he entered a bath tub for taking bath he discovered the above principle by observing the overflowing water he came out in the same state shouting eureka eureka meaning i found it i found it the use of archimedes principle is very wide this principle has been used in the construction of ships and submarines the instruments such as lactometer hygrometer are based on this principle density of substance and relative density density is equal to mass upon volume the si unit of density is kg per meter cube the property density is very useful in deciding the purity of the substance the relative density of a substance is expressed with respect to the density of water relative density is equal to density of liquid upon density of water this being a ratio of two equal physical quantities it has no unit relative density of a substance is called its specific gravity students you all have to learn these formulas you all have to keep it in mind density is equal to mass upon volume relative density is equal to density of substance upon density of water i hope you all understand whatever i tried to teach you all today with this we end the lesson thank you